Good morning, everybody. Good morning. God bless you. Good to see you. Uh, glad you can make it this morning. I hope you come to worship. Amen. I hope you come to worship today. Amen. There you go. There you go. Let me share a couple of announcements with you. Um, you might see from time to time, we got some reserve signs. We'll clip on the back of the pew. We have a couple of, uh, couple of people who attend here have some special medical needs. And so when you see a sign, that's not like to reserve a seat because of, you know, their pastor's favorite or something. That's, 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 although I might do that for my grandson, Jacob. I might do that for him. But that's because we have some people with special medical needs and it helps them because of where the maybe where the heat comes out or the air conditioning comes out or how close they are to the rear door. So there's two or three folks we might be using those for. So when you see those signs, just want you to know why, that, why we're doing that, okay? The other thing is we'll be having uh, one day next month our Compassion Sunday where we'll be talking more about the Compassion International Program and the children, the church that some of you sponsor. And so uh, the church has been sponsoring three, and one of those, one of those children has moved, moved off, and so we're two now. But the money that's donated up here helps go towards sponsoring those children. I think it's 40, how was it a month? 43. 43 a month now. Um, um, and plus, we give them a birthday present and a Christmas present usually. So that's what that's for. So if you have a chance, that, that we, if we don't get enough money here, we supplement it with the church treasury. But uh, that's what this is for. So uh, you're welcome to come up anytime if you want to donate to that. But... I'm glad to be in God's house this morning. I'm so glad to be. I'm glad to have my little buddy with me this morning. And we put that candy bowl to good use down in Papa's office today, too. So. We've been down there twice already. And he said, Papa, remember last year you were walking down there in the dark and you fell and broke your ankle. Don't do that again. I said, I won't. I'll try my best not to. I've got so much to be thankful for. God is so good to me, church, so good to me, and I thank him and praise him for his goodness. I don't know what I'd do without him, but thank you for coming this morning. We got some Sandy and Randy. I, you know what? Their names rhyme, so if I forget their names, I'm in bad trouble. We're so glad to have you, Sandy and Randy, with us today. Good to see Melissa and Zoe back with us. Good to have everybody here today. Let's all stand and let's uh, join Brother Brett and him song this morning. Turn on the page. 180, please. 180. Everybody will be happy over there. Yeah, 
Brother Kenny Jones, would you open our service in prayer, please? Amen. Amen. You can be seated. Let's have a. Uh, one more song, brother. Brett. Turn on to page 130, please. 130. I never shall forget the day. <laughs> everything to you. <laughs> Miss Bev, would you come and sing this morning? Can we get our ushers to come? We'll take up the morning offering as she's singing. And uh, do I think we have two coming up for the birthday this morning? Is that right? Miss Barb, is your... No, oh, Sherry one. Oh, last one. Okay. Okay. So we had Jacob here at Easter and didn't even think about his birthday. His birthday is April 5th, so after this we'll have our birthday in March. I was thinking we have two. We just got one. Come ahead, Miss Bev. Uh, I'm going to ask you to stand one more time. And Brother Jerry, would you ask a blessing over our offering, please, this morning? God, we thank you for a chance to give. We thank you for your grace and your kindness. And everybody who has the ability to give, we want you to give cheerfully because God will give back tenfold. We thank you so much for who thou art, Father. And we ask that every dime, every penny we give, go to where you have it, go and be a blessing to wherever it goes, Father. We thank you and give you all praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We all go through valleys, but we always know that God's right there if we call on Him. It's, it's G. I've been told it's G. As I kneel in the darkness in the middle of the night, I'm praying for assurance. Everything's gonna be all right. Lord, I
my bills are coming due home. Six days is not that long. She hears a voice so soft and low. Says I've moved like this before. I'll do this little thing. And I'll give you so much more. Didn't I walk on the water? Let's have uh, Jacob, let's go ahead and have him come up for your birthday march, okay? Thank you. That's a wonderful tradition. The church started well before I got here, and uh, I think it's very fitting that we continue on. So children up, up and through the age of 12, if they want to come anytime close to their birthday, it doesn't have to be on their birthday, that uh, we recognize them. And may they always remember that as just a small slice of the love of God and the love of God and His people. So thank you for making His day bright. Uh, many things for us to be prayerful about. I got a call this morning about a young lady who used to be in our youth group many years ago when, we, when Marcy and I had had the youth group at the Belleville Church. Her and her family are in dire need of prayer. So she was able to come to one of our roller skating nights and she 
Her desire is to get her grandchildren here, but uh, circumstances do not allow that, so please pray for that family. God knows who it is and what their need is. Remember them. Someone else with a prayer request you'd like to share? Yes, Brett. He seems to pray for Rob. He's not doing real good this morning. We'll pray Brother Rob needs our prayers, and we'll continue to pray for him. Thank you. Ms. Uh, Bev? I got a call from my sister at church down in Florida, and her husband is came down with cancer of the Larnix. And we're going to find out more on Tuesday. She's pretty shook up, and she says, we know we're going to take care of this. Yes, we do. We will pray. Somebody else? Miss Jackie? We will. We sure will. Miss uh, Johnny? Uh, pray for my family down south, my Robert's family. They really, really need your prayers. We're going to add out from the God who can take it. We will. Miss Jan? Yeah, we do need prayers for the ones that can't be here due to different circumstances. Yes. We will. Miss Zoe? Pray for everyone in the world and everyone who can't do today. Yes, yes. Thank you. Somebody else? Steve? Sure, he sure can. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Sure. Wonderful. Praise the Lord. So if you prayed then for Henry his uh, great-grandson that had a heart transplant, then praise the Lord with us now and let's continue to pray because as he said, there's a long ways to go. Lots of medication and therapy and being sure it doesn't reject it. So let's, let's pray. Let's pray. Three weeks ago tomorrow, they got that heart. Three weeks ago tomorrow and he's home. Amazing. And he's four, four years old. Three. Three, I'm sorry, three. Over here, Miss Debbie. We will. We will. Somebody else? Yes, Mrs. Kim? For the family of that friend of the meetings, Karen. She passed Friday. We sure will. We she will. was like a sister to Todd. We will. Mrs. Jen? Mrs. Mabel uh, texted me last night. She wants to first. She's been praying for her husband's cancer. And she wants to pray for her husband. And so is my sister. She's having more bad days. Thank you. Yes, Ms. Kelly? Um, pray for Ms. Maxine. Um, yes. She's got some issues going on in her house right now that she needs some prayer for. Mm -hmm. um, and then um, pray for, I got a friend coming home from Arizona. Um, it's going to take him a few days to get here, but um, pray for his safe travels we will. Um, until he gets home. We sure will. Anybody else? Brother Joe? Todd. Todd's not feeling well. We'll pray for Brother Todd. Miss Linda? Pray for my family, especially the prayer for Bradley. <coughs> We will. We will. Anybody else? Yes, Miss Brenda. We'll pray for her. I'll, uh, yes, Miss Vicki. For my niece, she has a tennis ball size tumor on her ovary, and she's going to have surgery. They told her there was a 50% chance that it would be cancer. We will pray. We will pray. Where would we go if we couldn't pray? Right. What would we do if we, if we, if we didn't have a, a, a Savior that conquered death, hell, and the grave and has the power uh, to heal under His wings? Where would we go? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you for your prayer request. All those with an unspoken request, you can show up by raising your hand. We encourage you and we invite you to join us in our morning time of prayer. You're welcome to come up to our altar or one of these front seats and pray, or you can pray right where you're at. Uh, my, my way of looking at this is it matters not so much where we pray, but it matters greatly that we pray, church. So let's uh, go to the Lord in prayer. Brother James, would you lead us in our morning altar, please? Father, we are grateful for the opportunity to be here. But we ask you to please open up all of our hearts and our minds to what it is you have to say to us today. We God, Lord, we look to you for our direction. We look to you for our salvation. We look to you, Lord, for our help in time of need. And surely you're all that and more. And we, you've heard every request made known here, Lord. Very serious requests, very serious things going on in people's lives, Lord. And, and wherever they're facing bad health issues, the possibility of death, and they're facing it without the knowledge of you as their personal Savior, 
may you speak to their hearts first and foremost. And if it's thy will, may you touch their bodies. But their hearts and their souls are most important. And we pray you direct your Holy Spirit to their spiritual needs and help them turn to you before it's too late. And, and where your children are facing troubles and difficulties, may you encourage them, Lord, and uplift them, Lord, and help them to dig deep into your word, into your love, into your promises, Lord, for their faith. And we're praying this morning, Lord, for this service. May you bless every song that's sung and testimony that's given that it might be well-pleasing in your sight, Lord. And we pray you just have your way. And amen. Amen. Well, we've already heard from Steve what good news that is. And we will continue to pray. I wonder if anyone else has something they want to brag about uh, the Lord to the church on behalf of this morning. Anybody? Well, me and Hazel went and rescued a donkey. <laughs> <laughs> a miniature donkey. Okay. That's good. Go, well, Jerry. The effectual, fervent prayer of the righteous. Yes. Availed much. Yes. Effectual. Mm -hmm. God knows you better than you know yourself. Mm -hmm. You can fool everybody. You can even fool yourself. But you can't fool God. Effectual prayer, righteous prayer, for real prayer, earnest prayer, that's effectual prayer. Fervent prayer, diligent, maybe constant. I remember standing up and saying, God heard you the first time. Well, how wrong was I? How wrong was I? You get on your knees and you pray as often as you feel this need to. Amen, Jerry, that's Who right. Who else are you going to come to? You're going to beg somebody, beg the one you can't fail. Amen. Beg the one you know. Amen. They can fix things in your life. The effectual, fervent prayer of the righteous availeth much. How are we deemed righteous? By faith. Mm -hmm. All through Bible, all through biblical time, that faith has healed you. That faith has set you free. Amen. God is good. Amen. All he asks you have faith in his, in his son. Just to believe that Jesus is Lord and King. Amen. And through him and by him, all blessings come. And asking in Jesus' name. And I just want to share that because God is good and I can't help him. God bless you. I praise him when I get a chance. God bless you. Amen. We get to a place in our country or in our church where we have to apologize for praising the Lord, then we need to mm. find another home. <laughs> Amen. Anybody else? Yeah, Pastor Joe. Uh, so in our public schools, I work for in our public schools, and they're in they're in a world of trouble. Um, and you know, it's got a lot of the work people groups um, up in arms and everything. And you know, I have to say, you know, there it could come and affect me as well. But every day I go in there, and it's the Lord. It is the Lord. I go in there, my heart is peace and joy in the face of all the storm. And uh, God's got it. You know, Amen. He's gonna take He's gonna take care of His. But I keep lifting that situation up. But just the fact that I can go in there with joy and a light heart in the face of such a solemn situation, it's God. And Amen. I'm grateful for it. Amen. Amen. God bless you, James. Okay. I love the Lord with all my heart, and you all know how much I love him. And I've made so many mistakes that I've let Satan keep me away. I'm back now, but I might be gone. So anyway, I just want you to know how much I love God. And I love each and every one of you, and every one of you have a special part of my heart, always will. And it's just been a joy to be with you. Amen. It's a joy to have you here, Miss Beth. God bless you. God bless you, Miss Abby. Anybody else? Yes, Miss Beth. There's a ministry out in Arbor that's called Fed Up Ministries. And Ann Arbor has kicked them out. And so they have taken house up in uh, Ipsland City across from the old Smith Furniture place. And there are needles, drug needles, and stuff all over. There's tents out there. They're homeless, and they want... Uh, they just go to the bathroom in the streets, and it's really a mess. And they can't get them out of there. And so on Wednesday night in the Ipsley City, there's going to be a meeting to address this area that all these people are setting up. They're just tens of things are just hanging out. But four businesses are in the <coughs> this because there's just drug <coughs> and things all over, just homeless people. 
and it's right next door to a thrift shop. <coughs> in and out, in and out, taking things and whatnot. And it's just a mess over there. We'll pray. We'll pray. Thank you. Yep. Okay. Yeah. You okay? Yeah. All right. Brother Dave's going to sing Miss Mia. Where are you at? Would you mind to sing after Dave, Miss Mia? <coughs> okay. Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. God bless you, Silas. Yes. Amen. Amen. Victory lap. seconds, y'all.
next breath might not be yours. I just want to say that as I was leaving my apartment this morning, I said to myself, you know what, I'm not going to grab my water bottle. I'm probably not going to sing. <laughs> I should have grabbed my water bottle. I take it everywhere I go. Today was the one day I didn't grab it. <laughs> there is coming a day where no heartache shall come. No more clouds in the sky and no more tears. I don't know if you've ever been to a church where there's a little holy shout that comes out sometimes. But let, let, let me just share with you this morning. You know, as long as God is in it, it's welcome in this church. As long as I'm pastor, it's welcome here. Because there's something sometimes that comes over us that a tear just doesn't seem to do it justice. And raising your hand just doesn't seem to do it justice. So I call that a spiritual relief valve. Either you're going to shout or you're just going to burst. And so... Uh, if the Lord leads that way and God is in it, it is welcome here. And praise the Lord. We serve a God that's worth shouting over, friends. That's your God is good, y'all. Amen. I said God is good, y'all. Amen. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> Did you hear what this brother said? When darkness is all around him, he got a ray of hope and a ray of light shining down on him. Yes. That takes Christian power, brother. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. When it's all around you, the strength to still feel righteous when the devil's all around you, the strength to feel the calmness of God, the grace of God, when you're surrounded by all that evil. God bless you. I was going to sing something, <clears throat> and y'all know I've been through some stuff with this cough and stuff, but God is good. I don't walk by sight, I walk by faith, and I believe everything I say. <clears throat> but every time I get down, I think about when I was a child and I go to church and they would sing Amazing Grace, and I was like, oh man, here come this old tired song. Maybe sing something with some beat to it, you know, in church, but 
the closer I got to God, the more I appreciated that song. The more I loved that song. And then I realized, wait a minute, that song means everything. Amen. <clears throat> amazing, amazing grace, how sweet the sound. But I want y'all to join in with me this. Oh, how I love Jesus.
If you want to turn your Bibles over to Psalms chapter 40, verse 5, we'd like to pick up one verse there to get our thought for the message this morning. Oh, Psalms chapter 40, verse 5. When you find your place, please stand in reverence to God's precious and holy word. Psalms chapter 40, verse 5 says this, Many, O Lord my God, are thy wonderful works which thou hast done, and thy thoughts which are to usward. They cannot be reckoned up in order unto, unto thee. If I would declare and speak of them, they are more than it can be numbered. Brother Brett, please pay for the service and their message this morning. Dearly Father, Lord, we thank you again for your presence that we felt this morning, Father. Thank you for another day that we come to your house, Lord, and, and worship your you, Father. Lord, I pray that you be with our pastor today, give him the words to speak, Father, that we need to hear. Father, Lord, we also pray if there's one here that's unsaved today, today be the day of salvation. Father, we pray that they wouldn't walk back through those doors without knowing yes. you. In Jesus' name we pray. Yes. Amen. 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 You can be seated. Thank you, Brother Brett. So the thought that I have this morning is you're on God's mind. You, every one of you individually, are on God's mind. And, and this is going to sound silly, but I think it kind of fits. So last, so I talked to you about this little hound dog puppy we're trying to train into a house pet. She's 61 pounds of blue fury. And uh, we've been looking at different, uh, you know, they're meant to run free, to, to just be able to run, not to be tethered. And so but because she's got that strong nose, I'm hesitant to just let her run free. So we've got these cables and stuff she runs on. And we've been looking at a more permanent solution. But last night, she had wore one of these cables back and forth, back and forth, and it snapped. And some lady comes up to the front door and hadn't seen her before. And I thought, well, what's this? And she said, your dog, she broke, her, she broke her cable. She's running loose. And so I went out and tried to call her. And she didn't come right away, which she wasn't at the neighbor's dogs. And so, but you know what I thought? What I thought is she pulled up the chain. And she pulled up the stake, which is driven into the ground. And with that nose, she followed it back into the woods. And what I can envision in my mind was that stake getting wrapped around some bushes and her winding around the tree. And in my mind, what I could see is her being stuck out there with no way of getting any help. And unless she used that really loud voice of hers to bark, I could see her starving to death and dying to death. Because you're not going to, I mean, that'd be worse than finding a needle in the haystack. You say, well, pastor, what's that have to do with this? Well, here you go, friends. If you don't know the Lord Jesus You'd be just like that dog that's got that cable wrapped up in the woods, and you'd be subject to all manner uh, of, 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 of uh, dangers that could come your way. You're subject to all manner of dangers that would come your way. And if that's you this morning, if you've never given your heart to the Lord, and that's who I'm speaking to this morning right now, you need to think about that. You need to think long and hard about that. And think about it this way. That even though we find ourselves, have you ever found yourself in a place like I described that little dog of mine? I certainly found myself there. Yes. You find yourself, you're so vulnerable and, and you're, you're subject to dangers and predators and all sorts of bad ways of thinking and acting and living. But all the while, all the while, you were on God's mind. Yeah. All the while, you were on God's mind. You know what Paul said? I think it's somewhere in the New Testament. Paul said, if my hope of Christ were in this life only, I would be of all men most miserable. But I'm so glad that my hope in Christ Jesus, oh, it extends far beyond this life. It goes whatever through whatever this life will take us, our hope of Christ will take us. And one day we won't live by hope anymore. We will live by sight one day, and that will be a glorious thing. So here the psalmist says, many, O oh Lord, my God, are thy wonderful works which thou hast done, and thy thoughts which are to usward. God has many thoughts about us, about me and you. Specific, he, he thinks about the church collectively, and that's all well and good, but I'm glad he thinks about Jerry and Jan and Marcy and James and James and, and Bill and all of you. He thinks about all of us individually. You say, well, Pastor, uh, how does Scripture point that out? Well, I'd be glad to tell you how Scripture points that out. Go with me over to Luke chapter 23 for a moment this morning. Luke chapter 23. And let's read in verse, uh, starting in verse 32. With the thought being you, whatever your name is, however old you are, whatever stage of life you're in, 
you are in God's thoughts and on his mind this morning. And so, picking up in verse 32 of chapter 23, it says this. Let's see if I got this right. Okay. Now we're cooking my guess. <laughs> And there were also two other malefactors led with him to be put to death. You know the story here. And when they were come to the place which is called Calvary, there they crucified him. And the malefactors, one on the right hand and the other on the left hand. Then said Jesus, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And they parted his raiment, his clothes, and they cast lots. So Jesus, from the cross... <laughs> Hanging between two common thieves that were guilty as guilty could be, Jesus on the cross, he says these, these, uh, these words with some of his last breath, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Do you know when he said that, you had to be on his mind? Now, certainly he was thinking about the ones that were crying, uh, uh, away with him, away with him, crucify him, give us Barabbas. Certainly they're, they're thinking about, he was thinking about them. And do you know every time that we say no to Jesus, every time that we are so blessed that the Holy Spirit would visit us with conviction upon our hearts and souls to turn our, turn our stomachs upside down and make us feel just a low down miserable inside, that, that, that if, if we say no, if we don't turn to God, if we don't take advantage of that, that strong motivation that God through His Holy Spirit is trying to send us, He's saying, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. And, 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 and this, this speaks to us, friends, of the length and depth and the height and, 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 and of God's love and his mercy towards us. Because who is he speaking to here? And remember, he's speaking to us. He's speaking to me and you individually right here, friends. But he's also speaking to the crowd that's assembled before him. Uh, the same ones that betrayed him. Uh, the same ones that said, away with him, away with him, crucify him. He's speaking to them. The ones when they had a chance as he's walking up the uh, Vela del Rosa, the road to the cross, they spat upon him. He, he's speaking to them. When they got close enough, Miss Marcia, so they could grab his beard and pull a whisker out, and the Bible says that, they yanked the whisker out. He's speaking to them. The ones that got close enough, Brother Brent, and they snuck in a sucker punch and they hit him. The Bible says they smote him. He's speaking to them. He's, the ones that laid his back open, when they scourged him, he's speaking to them. The big Roman soldiers are drove the nails through his wrists and his feet. For, and he's speaking to them. The ones that platted the crown of thorns down upon his head. He's speaking to them. Amen. The ones that lied and falsely accused him. He's speaking to them. Barabbas, the one that got released instead of him. He's speaking to him. And friends, rest assured, wherever you're at, whatever you're plot situation in life is, wherever, wherever this moment finds you spiritually, you might be like my little hound dog, tangled up in the woods, and you don't know how dangerous the uh, situation you're in right now truly is, if you don't get out of that, Jesus was thinking about, and he is speaking to you. And he says, Father, forgive them, it's interesting now, for they know not what they do. And, and you know, I've looked that over so many times, and I really didn't... Uh, I didn't run that down and search that out. But if you, if you were to go back to some Old Testament scriptures in Genesis chapter 9, you would see how that they're told to treat people who are guilty of murder. They divided it into two categories. One that was murder straight up. They knew what they were doing. They meant to do it, and they're guilty of it. And the other is what we would call, uh, uh, you, didn't mean to, you didn't mean to kill someone. What's the legal term for that? Manslaughter. You didn't, so it said if you were, if, it said that if you if you took blood, blood would be required. I mean, the Old Testament was pretty pretty strict about how the penalty was for for sin and for for uh, breaking the law and transgressions and murder. If you if you spilled blood, blood would be required of you. If you did it on purpose, you knew what you're doing. Your life will be taken. But if you did it as manslaughter, perhaps you didn't see someone coming. You had your ox cart going down the road, and by accident you hit that person, and he died, and that was on accident. It was found to be an accident. Then you had a chance to flee to the city of refuge. Why? Because you knew not what you were doing. You, you did it on accident. And, and Jesus is saying, Father, forgive them, 
They don't understand what they do. They don't understand what's happening here. And he said, hey, you can flee to a city of refuge. And I'm about to tell you how that city of refuge is none other than Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And he demonstrated on the cross when he said, oh, Father, forgive all those who've done these terrible things to me. Forgive them. If he can forgive them, and you were on his mind in Psalms 40 and 5, he can forgive you, church. He can forgive you. Praise the Lord. Aren't you glad for that? I didn't know anything about the city of refuge when I got saved, Brother David. But when I finally made my way out of that altar, out of that seat, and I came down, I don't remember any step. I was sitting about halfway back, I think, on this side. I came down, I hit the altar. I don't remember anything except for feeling like that someone had jumped back into the woods and got that tangled up leash and stake that was caught in the brush and got me out, and now I was free. I was free. <laughs> Uh, that's what I knew. And I, and I understood that God was thinking about me. So that uh, when he was on the cross, you were on his mind. And Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. I think it tells us and shows us that. Let's jump forward to Matthew or backwards to Matthew 26 and 39. See what it says. Another place where we can be sure that we were on God's mind. Matthew 26. 39 says, and he went a little further, and he fell on his face and prayed, Father, O oh Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou will. Jesus, knowing all the stuff that we just talked about, that he said, Father, forgive them, knowing that was about, this is on the other side of that. This is before that's going to happen, but he knows full well, being the son of God, 100% man and 100% God, he knows what's about to happen. He knows what's before him. And he says, Father, if it's possible, if it's possible for, for Pastor Joe to get saved, if it's possible for Miss Marcy to get saved, if it's possible for all those that will be at the Ipsland Missionary Baptist Church on uh, April uh, 21st, 2024, if there's any other way, Father, let this cup pass from me. But then he didn't stop there. He said, but nevertheless, not what I want, Lord, but your will, your will be done. That tells me, friends, he was, he was thinking about you. When, when, when he was on the cross, you, you were on his mind. It's, it's clear to me. It ought to be clear to you. It ought to speak to you. It ought to, it ought to really uh, get traction in your heart. It ought to really uh, make a difference in your life. It ought, to, it ought to be one of those red letter things you write down and think about that Jesus at his worst when, when things could not have got much worse for him, me and you, we were on his mind. And I'm sure that when he prayed in the garden, I'm sure of that, Brother James. Now let's go forward uh, a few verses further, Matthew 26, and let's look at verse 48 through 54. It says here, Now he that betrayed him gave them a sign, saying, Whomsoever I shall kiss, that same as he. Hold him fast. And forthwith, Jesus came and said, he came to Jesus and said, Hail, Master, and he kissed him. And Jesus said unto him, Friend, wherefore art thou come? And then they came, they laid hands on Jesus and took him. And behold, one of them which were with Jesus stretched out his hand, drew out his sword, and struck a servant of the high priest and smote off his ear. Then said Jesus unto him, Put up again thy sword into its place, for all they that take the sword shall perish with the sword. Thinkest, now listen, thinkest thou that I cannot now pray to my Father, and he shall presently give me more than twelve legions of angels. But how then shall the scriptures be fulfilled that thus it must be? <laughs> Miss Brenda, you know what that tells me? I was on his mind right there. I was on Brother Jerry, I was on Miss Jen, I was on his mind right there. Somehow, some way, in the midst of the gloom that was coming him, and remember, you say, oh, he could face this. He was God. He was God, but he was a 100% man. And he, he troubled in his heart, and he didn't want to go down this road if there was any other way. But we saw, because the Father didn't show another way, he said, then I'll go. If that's not your, if there's no other way, I'll go. And so he says here, he, he has, he had, Peter pulls out his sword and whacks off the soldier's ear, and the ear falls out. And in another scripture, we're told that he picks it back up and puts it on. Is that not miraculous? I've, I've lost a lot of hair. I'm not going not to get one of them to go back on. <laughs> they picked up his ear and put it back on. And I believe and it looked like it never came off for the day. 
I hope you laugh at that, but I, but I hope you'll take this part seriously. Jesus said, don't you know? Peter, if, if this was a fight with, with flesh and blood and sticks and stones and, and swords and, and, and spears, we'd fight. And don't you know if there was a fight, I'd call upon my Father and He would look down from heaven and He would send me more than 12 legions of angels to fight this fight. And there's no way that they could take me. I'm paraphrasing. But if I did that, what a fix the whole world would be in. What a fix the whole world would If I did that, how would the scriptures be fulfilled? Now, if, if you were to trace what happens from here, they don't drag Jesus kicking and screaming away. We, we don't find that. We, we don't find him trying to fight his way out of this. We find him how? As the lamb led to the slaughter. As the lamb. You know why? You know why? Because you were on his mind. I was on his mind. We were all on his mind. Even at the time when he was betrayed by one of his own and captured, we were on his mind. Even when he drew his final tortured breath, John 19 30 says this, When Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, he said, It is finished. And he bowed his head and he gave up the ghost. Pastor, I don't understand how that showed me I was on his mind. Because he finished the work. He, he finished the work. It was a job only he could do. It was a mission no one else could fulfill, Brother Steve. No one else could fulfill. It was, it was Christ alone and no one else but Christ. And if he had, if he had called his father to send the angels, if he had uh, found another way, we'd be in a mess. We'd be in a mess. But, but he was faithful to the Father's plan. He took everything the world, everything Satan, everything his detractors had to give, he took it. He was falsely accused. He was lied about. He was all manner of things you can think of. It was done to him, and he took it, and he opened out his mouth. And after they offered him the vinegar, he said, it's finished. And he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. He was faithful to the end. It wasn't for his well-being. <laughs> he was not well because of this, friends. He, he was unmercifully, ruthlessly <clears throat> tortured and killed. You, you know what that looks like? That paints a picture of the wrath of God. See, see that, that's what it takes to satisfy God's wrath over sins and transgressions. And that's why he was thinking about you when he went through all these different phases, phases, friends, because he was paying the debt that you and I would have to pay. Amen. And uh, did you ever play Monopoly and get out, get out of jail free card? <laughs> Isn't that a blessing? <laughs> how many times I couldn't roll doubles and how many times everyone else making all this money and I'm stuck in jail. And you get that get out of jail free card and every, all of a sudden things look better. This was a major get out of jail free card when, when Jesus, he finished the work. See, if he hadn't finished the work, everything else he'd done would have been meaningless. And you would still be caught up in your sins and trespasses. You'd still be like my little hound dog I was worried about, tangled up in the bushes, maybe going to starve to death or, or, or freeze to death. That, that would be you and that would be me. But thanks be unto God, he finished the job. John 4 and 34 says, My meat is to do the will of the Father who sent me and to finish his work. And he finished his work, friends. 2 Corinthians 5 and 21 says, For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Because, did you hear that? Because Jesus finished the work, his righteousness is imputed to us, and our unrighteousness is paid for by him. That's the most unfair transaction that's ever happened in the history of mankind, but it happened. You better take advantage of it. Colossians 2 and 14 says, Blotting out the handwriting of ordinance that, that was against us, which was contrary to us, took it out of the way and nailing it to his cross. The work was finished. The job was done and it was well done. The sin debt was satisfied. The blood requirement was fulfilled. And now the city of refuge is available for me and you to run to. Yes, it is. Yes. So let's go back to Luke chapter 23. By the way, I, I love my church, and I love being pastor here. I see one of my bookmarks I got out. It says, um, this is one of the kids gave this to me. You're the best pastor I could have. It says, love Luke to Pastor Joe. 
God was thinking about me. He knew I'd need that one of these days. I'll keep that in my Bible forever. So let's go back up and look at verse 26 through 31 where it says, And as they led him away, they laid hold upon him, uh, upon one Simon a Cyrenian coming out of the country. And on him they laid the cross, and he might bear it after Jesus. And there followed him a great company of people and of women, which bewailed and lamented him. But Jesus, turning, uh, turning unto them, said, Daughters of Jerusalem, weep not for me, but weep for your children and for your children. Weep for yourselves and for your children. For behold, the days are coming in which they shall say, Blessed are the barren and the wombs that never bear and the paps which never gave suck. They shall begin to say to the mountains, Fall on us and to the hills cover us. For if they do these things in a green tree, what shall be done in a dry? So, so see, see what he's saying? There's coming a day, friends. There's coming a day and a time and a circumstance that you are not prepared for. And you can be prepared because when he was on the cross, you were on his mind. When he was on, and all these different points along the road here that I shared with you, you rest assured you, they, the people at that time were on his mind, but rest assured me and you, all of us here today were on his mind. But there's coming a time, there's coming a day when the, when the world will have to pay for the transgressions and sins that are unforgiven, that are under the blood. And it will be worse than what you could possibly go, go through and read about the tribulation period and read about all the terrible things and the plagues and all all the things that the world will have to go through, I'm glad that's not me. If you're a child of God, that's not you. But if you're not, that is you this morning. And he says, he says, don't weep for me. <laughs> See, I don't need your sympathy. That's not, you need my salvation, but I sure don't need, don't weep for me. But he says, if you're not ready, if you don't take advantage of that city of refuge, uh, the, the very thing I was trying to get at when I said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. If you don't take advantage of that, friends, the time is going to come and it will be so bad. It will be so bad that people that don't have children will be glad that they didn't have children because they want to face it. The times will be so bad that people that never nursed their babies because they never had babies will be glad because their babies and them won't have to go through it. The time is coming and Revelation talks about in more details that if you aren't ready, if you haven't fled to that city of refuge, you'll cry to the rocks and the mountains, fall upon me. That will be an easier end than what God has planned for me because of the wrath of sin and God has to be settled. That day is coming. And then it says, for if they do these things in a green tree, what should be done in the dry? Now listen to this. If they do these things in a green tree. So Jesus is talking about himself being a green tree here. Think about all the things that I said he had to face, and I didn't cover them all. All the terrible things he had to go through, the, the tortures, the pains, the punishment, the false uh, accusations, the taking my sin and your sin upon him and nailing it to his cross, all that, friends. If Jesus, being the green tree, had to go through and suffer that and experience that, the wrath of God over the injustice of sin, what's going to happen to you and me in a dry tree? <laughs> We're the dry trees. What's, going, what's the fire do to a dry tree, Junior? Burns it right up, doesn't it? What's going to happen to... If that happens to Jesus and he's a green tree, if we don't accept Jesus, if we don't run to that city of refuge and accept the work he did on Calvary, sometime in this life, we will stand in judgment and we will pay the full penalty of sin and the justice and wrath of God. You don't want to face that, friends. The world would have you believe you don't have to worry about that. Everybody goes to heaven, but the world will go to heaven along with everybody that doesn't believe in Jesus. Perhaps the most powerful prophecy in all of Scripture, and I'll ask the musicians to come back because I'll share this last verse, comes from Matthew 27 and 42. <clears throat> As they thought they were mocking Jesus. Let me flip over here. Listen to what this is. Listen closely now. Matthew 27 and 42, talking about Jesus. This is, this is one of the chief priests mocking him and the scribes and the elders mocking him. This is the church leaders mocking Jesus and they said this, he saved others, himself he cannot save. If he be the king of Israel, let him now come down from the cross we'll believe him. Well, first of all, 
He did come down from the cross. <laughs> and he rose from the tomb. And they didn't believe him. They didn't believe him. But it says, he saved others himself he cannot save. That, right there, friends, is probably the most poignant prophecy of the whole Bible. Yes, they said that mockingly. They said that to challenge his authority and his power. But friends, a truer statement was never made. He did save us. He saved me. Who else here has he saved? Aren't you glad that he's, he saved? Raise your hand and let, let him know you're glad that he saved you. And had he chosen to save himself, me and you will be lost as lost could be this morning, friends. So yes, that's a very true prophecy. He did save others in himself. He could have saved, but he chose not to save. He could have called on his father, and his father could have sent those 12 legions of angels. And it says, if he be the king of Israel, let him now come down from the cross. He came down from the cross. He didn't, he didn't do it the way that they were, they were tempted him, saying, show us how powerful you are. Stop this whole process. Don't finish this work. Stop this process. Call upon your fathers. Uh, evoke, evoke your powers right now. Come off the cross alive. But that wasn't God's plan for him to come off the cross alive. The Bible says when he put that spear in his side, came forthwith came both blood and water. And that, that, was, that was biological proof that he was 100% dead. 100% dead. And they took him off the cross, dead. And they laid him in the tomb. And thanks be unto God because of that song Dave sang. Dave, why don't you have you sing? If you sing that one more time for our invitation song, I think that'd be a perfect invitation song. I know it's asking a lot of him with that bad throat and stuff he's got, but because Jesus came forth from the grave, the grave couldn't hold him. You and I, we can take advantage of the finished work of Jesus on the cross just simply through belief, expressing your belief in Jesus. And if you've never done that, you're in trouble. You're in a world of trouble. And I can't promise you you'll get another chance beyond today. But if you're here, you have today. You definitely have today. And I, and I pray as we stand and as Dave sings, and I pray you try and think about this message. You were on his mind. And you're on his mind this morning. And it's his desire that you would come and run to the city of refuge so you don't have to face a world so bad. So bad. And I, I perish this thought, Brother Jerry. I, I, I hate this thought that there might be somebody here today that one day down the road is running to the rocks and the mountains and saying, I remember the message that was preached and I should have ran to the city of refuge and it's too late now and oh, would the rocks and mountains fall on me so I won't have to experience what God has in store. If that's you, would, would you please consider coming this morning? Would you please? Go ahead, Brother Dave.